What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video. Today I'm doing my top 20 current best NASCAR drivers racing today in NASCAR. Let's go just jump straight into it. Keep in mind, it's just my opinion. Your list definitely are going to be different than mine that you put in the comments. But these are my current top 20 best drivers racing on the circuit today. So let's go, go ahead and just jump straight into it. Starting off in the number 20 spot, we are going to have Chris Buescher who takes up the number 20 place. Chris Buescher has really impressed the hell of me throughout his NASCAR career so far. He won the 2015 NASCAR Xfinity Series Championship, and he carried J.C. Doherty for a couple years over there and really, really impressed me in the couple years he ran there. I mean, in 2019, he ended up finishing, I believe, 20th in the scenes in a JTG Doherty car, and he really, really performed extremely well in there. And so far this year, Rush, you know, 2020 was not a great year for the Rush Family organization, but in 2021, he's been contending for the playoffs this year, and I think he's really, really one of the most underrated drivers currently racing in NASCAR today. So I think that he'll continue to do a lot more as time goes on, and he currently sits number 20th on my top 20 current NASCAR drivers. Up next, we're going to jump up to number 19, and that is going to be taken by John Hunter Nemechek. Now, John Hunter Nemechek's first year in the NASCAR Cup Series was absolutely not impressive, let's be real. He had the most incidents on the racetrack in the 2020 season. He had a really strong run at Darlington early in the year, but other than that, his 2020 season was not that impressive. However, he has been really impressive in his time in the NASCAR Truck Series drive for Kyle Busch Motorsports. He's already won five races so far in the NASCAR Truck Series and was really, really fast in Xfinity Series races for Sam Hunt Racing as well that he's been able to race so far until he had mechanical issues at Dover. But I think John Ramichek is going to continue to prove. I think he's ready to jump back up to the Cup Series, to be perfectly honest with you. He's done really, really well so far in the Truck Series. And I think he's on the road to recovering a great career. And I think John Ramichek is going to continue to do a lot of great things in the Cups in his time in NASCAR. Up next, we're going to jump up to the number 18 spot, and that is going to be held by the driver of the number three in the Cup Series, Austin Dillon. For a long time, I was really not a big fan of Austin Dillon. He is a 2011 Truck Series champion, also won the Xfinity Series championship in 2013. But I think over time, the longer he's been in series and the more veteran he has become, the more impressed I've been of Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon currently sits with three current NASCAR Cup Series victories so far, and as time has gone on, he's been more consistent and more impressive. 2019 was a really, really bad year, but last year, 2020, he got one victory, and he's done extremely well so far this year. I know he currently sits outside of the playoffs, but he's shown what he can do in an RCR car points, and it's really, really plus. I think it's because if Tyler Reddick, I think, has come in there and really, really made the organization a lot better. So I think Austin Dillon, 2000, well, as time goes on, will get better, and I think that he might get higher up on the list. We'll have to see for sure. Up next in the number 17 position, that spot is going to be held by Ross Chastain. I think Ross Chastain is one of the most talented, organic drivers that is racing currently in NASCAR right now. I think he is a very, very good driver. He's been, but the problem with Ross Chastain and why he's not higher on the list is he's been known to be a little bit uh, too aggressive, in my honest opinion. Yes, he can use that aggression for a lot of good things, but I think at points he's a little aggressive. But when he's good, he is really, really good. I mean, in 2019, he went down to the truck series and drove for Nice Motorsports and almost won the championship with Nice Motorsports. That really wasn't a great organization. So he's not a driver that is really, really bad. He's a very solid driver. And in the few starts he had for Chip Ganassi Racing in 2019, 2018, excuse me, before he went back to, to Nice Motorsports for that organization, he really, really impressed in those races as well, finishing finishing unfortunately crashing out at Darlington due to him and Kevin Harvick's problems and also winning at Vegas and then almost winning at Richard finishing runner up almost catch Chris Ball for the victory. So I do think that Ross has seen long term is going to continue to do some really, really awesome things going forward. And hopefully he'll be back at track house in 2021. But I think that long term, 22, excuse me, but long term I think Ross has seen is going to continue to be a good driver in next NASCAR. Up next in the number 16 spot, we are going to talk about one of the upcoming stars Racing currently in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. The driver that's been racing the number 54 and the number 18 in the ARCA Series, Ty Gibbs. The reason I'm ranking Ty Gibbs as high as I am is because I think Ty Gibbs has the potential to be a NASCAR Cup Series champion. He is only 18 years old. And he's already won two Xfinity Series champ two Xfinity races so far. Winning at Daytona Road Course in his first start and also winning at Charlotte. The fact that he's already won two Xfinity Series races at such an age is so damn impressive, and the fact that he's continuing to impress on a week-by-week -week basis, no matter what he's getting into, he's only had one or two top finishes outside the top five this year. 
I know he's in Joe Gibbs racing equipment, but you've got to perform. And so far, he has really, really impressed me. And like I said, I think that Ty Gibbs is a future NASCAR Cup Series championship champion. I think we'll, we'll have to continue to watch and see what he's going to do going forward. But Ty Gibbs, I think, is a very, very awesome driver. Up next, we're going to jump up to the number 15 spot. And that spot is going to be held by 2020 NASCAR Xfinity Series champion Austin Sinder. I think Austin Sindrick absolutely is very, very impressive. He, when, at the beginning of his career, he really was not that impressive of a driver. He got into a lot of wrecks around 2018 when he raced in the Xfinity Series for that number 60 car and rotated into multiple cars. He absolutely struggled. But as time has gone on, he's gotten better and better and better. And he honed the net in 2020, and he was able to win the championship in 2020. He has made select NASCAR Cup Series starts, and of all the drivers I've seen to have made select NASCAR Cup Series starts throughout the time, he's been one of those drivers that has shown a lot of speed in those races and has contended for victories. And I wouldn't be shocked next year in 2022 as he'll be driving a two-car next year. I will not be surprised if Austin is contending for victories in the 2022 season. I'm really excited to see what Austin can do going forward, and I think he'll be one of the top 10 drivers going forward as time goes on. Up next in the number 14 position, that is going to be held by the driver in the number 8 car for RCR, Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick has also been really, really impressive this year. He's been really, really doing an incredible job with RCR. I know that they got the Hendrick ECR upgrades in 2021 when they combined the engines, but I think Tyler Reddick, even last year, proved that he was overall, despite not winning the rookie year, I think he was overall the most impressive rookie that race in NASCAR. And to me, he's been doing really, really good. I mean, he's a two-time NASCAR Xfinity Series champion winning in 2018, 2019. And I think that he will continue to do a lot of great things going forward in NASCAR. And I think he could one day win a NASCAR Cup Series championship. I don't, doesn't, we don't know where he'll be racing, but I think that he'll continue to do a lot of great things. And I think that he has the potential to be a NASCAR Cup Series champion one day. Next, in the number 13 position, we have the no driver of the number 12 car, and that is Ryan Blaney. Now, I think Ryan Blaney is not better than any of the drivers in the top 12, and the reason I have a rank this low is you'll find out really, really soon why. But to me, I think Ryan Blaney is a very, very solid driver, but he's only been able to win one race every year since getting over to Team Penske, and I think Joe Logano and Brad Kisowski have been able to win multiple races after time at Team Penske. He's only been able to win one race each year driving for the Team Penske Corp. Corporation. So to me, I need to see a little bit more for Ryan Blaney, but I do think that Ryan Blaney has potential to become a much better driver. But so far, I think he's about 13th best currently in the NASCAR, but that's just my honest opinion that I think he currently sits in number 13. Up next in the number 12 spot, we have the driver of the number 20, and that is Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell, I think, is a generational talent. I think he's absolutely really, really good. However, this year it's been, he's gone down a little bit on my totem pole because of the fact that he's kind of, other than a couple really strong runs, he's kind of struggled at points in that number 20 car. I don't know if it's there. He's still having a little bit of remnants of when Eric Jones was over at that organization last year. But I think Chris Bell is a driver that will do a lot of great things. I mean, yeah, look at Chris Bell in the Xfinity Series. He got multiple times where he got seven wins, I think, in 2018 and eight wins in 2019. He won a lot of races in his time, you know, racing in the Xfinity Series. And he's come up to the Cup Series, and he does have one win at the Daytona Road Course. And I do think, like I said, he is a guy that could also, along with a lot of drivers I mentioned, that could win a Cup Series championship one day. And Toyota really, really believes in him. So to me... I think Chris Bell will continue to be a good driver in NASCAR, and I think that he deserves to be number 12 on my list. Up next in the number 11 spot, we're going to talk about the driver of the number 48, driving for the number 40 for Hendrick Motorsports, Alex Bowman. I think Alex Bowman is a very, very good driver who's been very, very clutch at moments. I mean, this year he's been able to close out in three NASCAR races, winning at Richmond, winning at Dover, the most dominant race he was able to get, and basically clutching after Kyle Larson had a flat tire at Pocono, was able to win that, and currently has five career NASCAR Cup Series victories. I do want to see a little bit more of Alex Bowman completing races and dominating more races than he has, but I do think him winning as much as he has is really, really impressive to me. And I think that's why he signed a long-term, a con little bit of a longer contract extension with the Hendrick Motorsports through the 2023 season when the Ally deal is up. So to me, I think that Al Soman will do will continue to be a great driver for NASCAR. And I really like him a lot. And I'm excited for the future of Al Soman. I think that he could get up higher on this list. Up next, in the number 10 position, we're going to have the driver of the number one car for Chip Ganassi Racing, Kurt Busch. 
Kurt Busch is, a, is an NASCAR Cup Series champion, won the 2004 championship for Roush Chevy Racing, and I think overall has carried the Chip Ganassi Racing banner, banner since Kyle Larson left the organization. I don't think Kurt Busch has absolutely done, absolutely blown the world away, but he does have three wins for the Chip Ganassi Racing organization, one of those coming in 2019 at Kentucky, 2020 in Las Vegas and Field Match in a pretty dominating fashion at Atlanta Mercy, which was really, really impressive. I think Kerbush still has the potential to win more and more races as time goes on, and I think he's absolutely deserved to be in the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and I think we'll see more out of Kerbush going forward in the future years. He definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame for sure. Up next in the number nine position, we have the driver of the number 24 car for Hendrick Motorsports, William Byron. William Byron, for the first couple of years of his NASCAR Cup Series career, he wasn't absolutely really impressive. But in 2021, he has really, really taken a major step forward. He, while he only has one win so far, which came back at home, said he has been extremely consistent this year. He's been in the top five in points a majority of the year, has a lot of top fives and a lot of top tens this year. And we've seen a lot of speed out of this number 24 car. And I think him, of course, Rudy Fu coming on to be the crew chief for him, I really think that's helped William Byron. I think he is also another driver that is a generational talent who could win a championship very, very soon. He could be the next hundred driver to win a championship. He honestly could win it this year the way he's been running. We'll have to see for sure. But I think William Byron is a driver that can win a championship long term. And I'm really excited about his future for sure. Up next in the set in the eighth position, we have the driver of the number two car and eventually the number six car for Roush Emmy Racing, Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski, I think, is a driver that deserves a lot of praise for what he's been able to do in his time in NASCAR so far. I mean, he's been able to carry cars throughout his career. He was able to win Penske's first championship in 2012 with Dodge. When Dodge is basically leaving the sport, they basically won the last time The last time that Dodge was able to win the last championship they were able to run. He basically won that. And in 2011, and, only a, and by the way, only in his third year nonetheless, he was able to do that. And Rich Ridge is really, really rare for a driver of his caliber to win in your third year. It's very rare, especially nowadays, where it takes a lot of drivers 10 to 15 years to get your first championship. The fact that it only took him three years to win it, three full-time Cup Series years, I think is really, really impressive. And I'm really excited about his time at Roush, and I think that he will long-term continue to push Roush to new limits in 2022. And I think he deserves a lot of respect that he's gotten so far in his time in NASCAR. Up next in the number seven position, we have the 2017 NASCAR Cup Series champion and the driver of the number 19 for Joe Gibbs Racing, Martin Truex Jr., I think Mark Truck Jr. is a very, very good driver. And I think over the last couple, especially over the last five or six years, I think he's proven he deserves to be in NASCAR. But like I said, for a long time, he was basically like one of the favorite underdogs who could do very, very well, but really wasn't able to push in. I think, he's, like I said, he's also one of the best drivers in NASCAR that's currently racing at the moment. And I think that Mark Truck Jr. is going to continue to push at Avalon, and I think he's done a lot of good things, and I think he deserves to be up in number seven. I mean, 2019 NASCAR Cup Series champion so far winning three races in the NASCAR Cup Series season is really, really good if you ask me. Up next in the number six position, we have the driver of the number 22 for Team Penske, Joey Logano. Joey Logano is only 31 years old, but he's been racing in NASCAR since 2009 at the age of 18 years old. And from that moment, he had potential to be a driver that could do a lot of good things. But his time at JGR did not go very well, only winning two races. But ever since he's gotten over to Team Penske, he has been incredible to watch over the last few years. And I think that, you know, I think he's a driver that's going to be around for the last 10 years. And I would not be shocked if he's able to win another championship or another two championships and is able to get up into the 50 to 60 win range with how good of a driver he really, really is, especially at a young age like he is. I think he's a driver that will carry the sport for a long time, and I think that he will continue to be a great ambassador for the sport going forward. I know his aggression, a lot of people don't like him, but you have to admit that he's one of the most talented and raw talented drivers that is currently racing in NASCAR today. Up next in the number five position, we have the driver of the number 11 car for Joe Gibbs Racing, Denny Hamlin. While Denny Hamlin has not won a NASCAR Cup Series championship, he's been usually one of the most consistent and always wins multiple races. And a look at Denny Hamlin as arguably the greatest driver to never win a NASCAR Cup Series championship as of now. Considering Denny Hamlin has over 40 career NASCAR Cup Series victories, three Daytona 500s, you name it. 
He's done so much in his career, and I think that regardless if he's able to win a championship or not, he will be a NASCAR Hall of Famer with what he's been able to do. And to me, he's done absolutely great throughout his career, and I think that he will continue to prove why he deserves to be here. Up next in the number four position, we have the driver of the number four car for Stuart Haas Racing, Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick is currently, I believe, second on the all-time win list. He also won the championship in 2014 for Stuart Haas Racing as a driver for Stuart Haas Racing since 2014. And he's been, until up to this year, he's won at least two or three races in general in a season. And he's been consistently winning multiple races of year. And ever since he got to SHR, and he also carried Richard Tillis Racing, by the way, for the longest time. To me... Kevin Harvick has a few more years left in NASCAR, but his career is absolutely historic. Like I said, Hall of Fame worthy. And I do think that Kevin Harvick could also potentially make a major, major comeback late in this year. And for all we know, could contend for a championship. We'll have to see, but Kevin Harvick is number four on my list. Up next in the number three position, we have the driver of the number nine car for Hendrick Motorsports and defending 2020 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott, I think, is a very, very solid driver at the only age of 25 years old. Keep in mind, he won a championship at the age of, technically, at the age of 24 years old. The 20, 24, 25 years old. He wasn't 25 at the time when he won the championship. But at the age of 24 years old, not even for 25 yet, he won his first NASCAR Cup Series championship. And he's already won, so far throughout his career, 13 career NASCAR Cup Series races. I think he's arguably the best son to race in NASCAR, the son of a NASCAR driver, in a very, very long time. And I think that long term, he'll win multiple championships. You never know. He could be one day a seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion, especially with all the road courses coming on the schedule. He's also the road course king as well. And I think he's done absolutely great. This guy, I think, long term, could be a legend of the sport. And I think he's already on the way to be a NASCAR Hall of Famer with the way he's racing currently. Up next in the number two position, we have, and this is going to be a little controversial, we have the driver of the number 18 for Joe Gibbs Racing, Kyle Busch. Now, the reason I do not have Kyle Busch currently at the number one position is because the guy we're going to talk about in a minute has a lot more going for him long term. But Kyle Busch should absolutely be respected for what he's been able to do. Yes, Kyle Busch has a big mouth. He's a guy that's not afraid to speak his mind and is very, very controversial. But he has the raw talent to back up to him, winning two NASCAR Cup Series championships in 2015 and 2019, winning 102 NASCAR Xfinity Series races and winning a championship in Xfinity in 2009, and having a very, very successful Truck Series program along with that. Kyle Busch has definitely struggled over the last couple years, but I think as time goes has gone on, as things are getting back to normal, he has definitely been become more of a better driver going forward. And to me, I think Kyle Busch has about five to ten more years left of his career. You never know, Kyle Busch can win a few more championships, and he still, I think, is looking for that Daytona 500. I think he has a really strong shot of winning a Daytona 500 as well before the end of his Cup Series career. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the number one driver currently racing in the NASCAR Cup Series. And that honor is going to go to the driver of the number five for Hendrick Motorsports, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson is absolutely outstanding. Kyle Larson currently is 29 years old, and he joined Rick Hendrick's organization of Hendrick Motorsports in 2021. I thought in 2021 he was going to be good and get two or three wins all throughout the year. Kyle Larson is already the best driver currently racing in NASCAR at the moment in the point standings right now, sitting second in points behind Denny Hamlin at the moment. But it's not just the fact that he's been able to win a lot of NASCAR races. He's been able to win dirt races, been able to win 410s, been able to win midget races, win the Chili Bowl, win the Rolex 24 for Chip Ganassi Racing, be good solid on road courses, win a road course race at Sonoma against Chase Elliott and against Martrex Jr., who are two of the best road course racers out there on the racetrack. And to me, I think he will be a driver that will carry Hendrick Motorsports banner for a very, very long time. He wants to remain in the Hendrick Motorsports banner, and I think that he has the most raw talent currently racing NASCAR. I know that's extremely controversial, but I do think that Kyle Larson could get up to 40 to 50 plus victories before the end of his career because he's starting now. We're seeing the true Kyle Larson, and he carried Chip Ganassi for such a long time, and now they're shutting down the year Chip Ganassi is, but he carried Chip Ganassi racing for such a long time, and he deserves the praise and honor that he has gotten at his time in NASCAR, and I think he deserves to be number one on my list. And now we're going to go and jump on to all the honorable mentions that I did not mention who are not currently sitting in the top 20 on my list. The first one I want to mention is Bubba Walls. 
I think Bubba Wallace is a very, very solid driver. The problem is Bubba Wallace has not won any NASCAR Cup Series races, and all the drivers on this list are future Cup Series champions. I do not think that Bubba Wallace is a future Cup Series champion. I do think he's a potentially a guy that could have a similar career, maybe to like Casey Kane, perhaps. Maybe he could win quite a few races. Maybe like a sort of similar career to Sterling Marr, where he'll win a few races. But in all honest and sincere opinion, I don't think that Bubba Wallace deserves to be in the top 20 as of right now. i got to see more out of him. I know he's never been really great equipment, but when he's been good equipment, he's been really, really fast. I know 2311 just started up this year and at points. He's shown a lot of promise and a lot of speed. But i got to see a little bit more from Bubba Wallace going into the 2020 season. i got to see a little more from him going forward. The second driver I'm going to mention that I did not mention is Daniel Suarez. I think Daniel Suarez being a 2016 NASCAR Cup Series champion, I do think he has had a really, really struggling time in the Cup Series. But... I think he's really earned the respect back from a lot of people, including myself. And I do think that there is potential next year that he will be much, much better. And I think Suarez will continue to play a major, major role and a major, major factor into the future of track house racing. The third driver that is honorable mention is going to be the driver in the number 14 for Stewart House Racing, Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe struggled as a rookie this year, but his time in the Xfinity Series was absolutely impressive. Last year, he won nine races in the number 98 car, and is arguably the favorites win the championship up to that point. Was able to make it to the final four, but struggled in the final four at Phoenix. I think Chase Briscoe knows what he's doing, and I think that long term, the more experience he gets, the better that he's going to be. And I think next year we could see a very, very surprising Chase Briscoe in the 2022 season. Up next, in the next honorable mention, is going to be the driver number 43 for Richard Petty Motorsports, Eric Jones. I think Eric Jones has had a very, very up-and-down career. He's got two wins so far in the Cup Series, those coming at Darlington in the Coke 600, and winning, actually not the Coke Center, the Southern 500, and winning at Daytona for the Coke Zero Sugar 400. But Eric Jones struggled at Joe Gibbs Racing, and I do think a lot of it was the pit crew and the crew chiefing staff that they had over there. But his time at RPN has honestly not been great as well. But that being said, I think he has a raw talent to back it up, and I think that if he got in a better organization of RPN Switch and Twitter, and they become a good organization, I think he could redeem himself going forward. And the final driver I did not mention on my list is Matt Benedetto. Now, Matt Benedetto, I like him a lot. He's a great personality for the sport. That being said, Matty D has not won a race in any of NASCAR's top tier divisions. He's not won a Cup Series race. He's not won an Xfinity Series race. He's not won a Truck Series race. Everybody else that is on this list has either won a Cup Series race, an Xfinity Series race, or truck series race. Yes, he had a better average finish with Wood Brothers this past year than last year than Ryan Blaney did in 2017. But I got to see more from Matty D. I really, really do. And I think he's a good driver. And I, wherever he goes next year, I'm wishing the best luck. He's not coming back to Wood Brothers next year. But I think that he's got to do more to be respected, in my honest and sincere opinion. So, anyway, those are my top 20 current best NASCAR Cup Series NASCAR drivers. Well, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Turn on so you notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Support page on the link description below for that. And comment below your thoughts on today's video. What are your current top 20 NASCAR Cup Series NASCAR drivers? Let me know in the comments below. I have a couple on tomorrow on the channel. Friday, we will be returning to the normal NASCAR routine of news. And then on Saturday morning, you're going to be hearing a major, major announcement that will be dropping on my channel around 8.30, 9 o'clock, and is a very, very big deal for me and my family. So I definitely think you should pay attention to that announcement because that is going to be dropping on, I'm going to be recording that Friday evening, and that will be dropping Saturday early morning. So definitely want to pay attention to that announcement going forward. But anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great and awesome NASCAR content. Take care, everybody.